so let's go. Let's go. How you flip the camera? I'd like to welcome you to our open house uh, of Toledo Masjid al Islam. I'm Imam Ibrahim Abdul Rahim. I'm the Imam here at, at this Masjid uh, or Mosque. And uh, just so we know, in case of emergency, we have the exits on, the, on both sides. You know, you can just run out there and run straight out that door and to the back if, if everybody has to you know, bug out of the building. And, uh, you know, the, the women's restroom is over here on this side of the room. South side, uh, excuse me, on the east, yeah, on the south side, and the pink area, and the men's restroom is on that side. There's also a fire extinguisher by that door, and by this door, and upstairs in case of, a, of an emergency. I have to, you know, you have to say that when we're on four people. <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, and then if you do have to evacuate, evacuate, please do so orderly and as safe as possible. Uh, also, uh, uh, Toledo Masjid of Al-Islam is one of the many mosques or masajid here in the, in the city of Toledo. It's home to Muslims indigenous to the Toledo area. This, this particular mosque is the first masjid or mosque built from the ground up in the state of Ohio. They say it's one of the first ten in the United States of America, this building that we're occupying right now. It's built in 1953. Uh, by the Syrian Lebanese Muslim community that immigrated here uh, at the turn of the century. Uh, so we're here to contribute to the upliftment of human life and society as it was by uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon the Prophet, his companions, and the righteous followers of the Enlightenment that followed that era. Our monthly open house program is called Ten Forward. And it's Ten Forward, we use that name because it's we use the best, what we consider to be the best 10 months out of the year, starting with February. <clears throat> and it's our effort, or what we call Dawa, and it's targeted at the pledge to make contributions to all that make 
better. Being diverse communities within a diverse society, we must all work in our places to address all issues that negatively impact what our collective life should be about. Our acceptance and cooperation with each other is essential for overcoming all the negative trends that affect us. So we again welcome you to take the time and effort to support this particular event. Uh, we have some vendors here, and uh, Sister uh, Medina, she's going to come up and give you a, a, an overview of what that particular initiative is all about. And just so we, you know, we want to be on the same page with you. Also, you know, we launched an initiative here to to uh, embark upon inspiring, you know, our community and our, our congregation, especially to embark upon entrepreneurship. You know, in the society that we live in right now, because of the shortage of, of uh, employment, especially in the, in the in the city, you know, it's, it's important to for us to start doing, you know, thinking outside of the box, doing for self, and uh, starting to uh, to uh, plan for our own future economically, you know, in every other way, so that we don't have to be or feel as if we have to depend upon other people to. to uh, employ us or to make you know make our lives mean more meaningful or, or or to help us to be more fluent in the life that we're going to live in in this country so and so she's going to come up and give us a, a just a brief outline of the the uh the uh um, um, the Lord and the Lord there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Medina. So, uh, anyway, the, today we have uh, our brother uh, Sashir Jones with us. He's uh, a councilman and actually the first Muslim councilman to be elected in the city of Cleveland, Ohio. He's not here in that capacity today. He's here as a brother and one of us. Uh, <coughs> But uh, just to give you an, an idea of who Bashir is, he actually he came here, he spoke at our Umat dinner a few months ago uh, uh, to the whole broader Muslim community here, and well, actually the Toledo community here back a few months ago in October, because we have an annual dinner that uh, we put on as a, as a total community. Uh, he's an impassionate leader, motivational speaker, 
and spoken word artist with a positive message of empowerment and change. Born in Brooklyn, New York on October 25, 1984, and later transplanted to Cleveland, Ohio as a child, he graduated cum laude from the distinguished Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia in 2006 with a degree in African American Studies. He later pursued graduate studies at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Bashir understands that true success is giving back, which is why he decided to he decided to he decided to go to Cleveland, where he became the youngest uh, new talk show host at Radio One. Bashir has been interviewed by Time Magazine and Essence, and has been a guest correspondent on CNN, MSNBC, and C-SPAN. Bashir played an important role in the city of Cleveland during the 208th presidential election by hosting several Barack Obama rallies and held one of the largest youth voter registration drives in the city. He later became the regional field director for organizing for America and the Democratic National Committee during the 19th, excuse me, the 2012 presidential campaign. Bashir's dedication, commitment, and commitment has enabled him to publish his first book entitled, I Speak for Change, or I'll Speak for Change. He is the president and founder of the Bashir Jones Foundation, as well as a proud member of the NAACP and Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. He has received various awards and recognition for his accomplishments, including the Emerging Leader Award from Congresswoman Marcia Fudge and the Urban League Distinguished Men Award. He's, he is the creator of the Be the Change Leadership Series, in which Bashir facilitates leadership and character development workshops within various school systems throughout the state of Ohio. He's recently delivered a powerful, heartfelt speech at Cleveland State University entitled Changing the World One Young Person at a Time. Bashir's indebtedness and passion to serve his community propelled him to run for city council in the Ward 7 in Cleveland 2013 election. His love for his community pushed him to run again, and his persistence paid off. On January 1, 2018, Bashir Jones was sworn in as the first Muslim city councilman in Cleveland's 200-year history. With his compelling, soul-stirring delivery, Bashir continues to bridge the gap between the youth and elders by sharing his life experiences with words that inspire and motivate all who hear him. His dedication for speaking on behalf of the voiceless has allowed him to travel throughout the country and in international circuit delivering his inspirational message of hope and change. Mr. Jones is a devoted community servant that strives to live by the affirmation that we must be the change that we want to see in the world. And I, and I second that. You know. uh, we must be the change that we want to see happen. We're here to make a contribution to that change. So um, without any further hesitation or reservation, I'll, I'll bring before you the uh, you know, speaker for the program today. Thank you. Uh, I don't know what's going on in Toledo, but this energy, we got to get it up. Maybe it's the wind outside, but we just drove two hours from Cleveland, so we need some good energy. First and foremost, I will be that ministering on the regime to get some on our knees. We seek refuge. We seek refuge in the Creator from the evil energy, the evil spirit that exists. And Bismillah ar in the name of God, the beneficent, the most merciful. You know, I'm so excited to be here with you today. And I was really excited when I walked up and I saw this big banner that talks about you doing events here where you have health clinics, you have feedings. These things are so important. Because you have people who say that they are lovers of God, but they hate God's people. 
You can't say you love God, but hate God's people. In the word it says, how do you say you love God that you don't see? Hate man that you do see, surely you are alive. So we recognize that love is not just a word, but it's action. And love is not something that you keep only for those who believe what you believe and look the way that you look, but love in its true expression and form is for all people. You ain't gotta look like me for me to serve you. You don't have to believe what I believe for me to serve you. There's a spiritual medicine in giving. There's a medicine in giving that only those who give can receive. Inshallah, I want you to, God willing, I want you to just come on a journey with me, okay? And I pray that we can grow closer to the Creator before this is all over. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. When my family moved to Cleveland, Ohio, we lived in a place called the Salvation Army. It was a shelter for women and children. But while we lived in the shelter, my mother, she would take us to go feed other homeless people. Mm -hmm. At a very young age, she would teach us that no matter how bad you think you have it, somebody got it, somebody got it worse than you. Mm -hmm. No matter your situation, no matter your struggle, the medicine for our anger is gratefulness. Be grateful. Be grateful with everything going on in the world. You know, people don't like to come into the masjid, and they have already have a perspective of what they think it is. So when Imam came up and said, listen, before we get started, this is how you get out if you want to be safe. I saw some of your faces. <laughs> you got nervous. <laughs> the Imam started off with an emergency plan. <laughs> so some people already have this idea of the masjid, but I want for especially my brothers and sisters of the Christian faith to know that Islam is as a part of you as Christianity is. If you read the Quran, it won't turn you into a frog, I promise you. And you will find that if you were to do your ancestry, we know that over one third of the Africans that came to America, they came from West Africa, which was only known for African traditional religions and Islam. But for the Muslims, that's not to say that we disrespect Christianity. You obviously are not aware of the prophetic example of Muhammad, so Lord Wasallam. Where the very first place that he sent the Muslim for refuge was what? A Christian nation. Ethiopia. King Nagashi. King Najashi. A Christian king. You know, some of us we learn about this way of life, and for some reason. For some of us, it causes us to be distant from the very people that we're supposed to be serving. Can I be truthful with y'all today? Sure? Yes, I'm not from Toledo. So, Imam, I'm okay? When you study the life of Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, you see that in Mecca and Medina, you find that Muslims were always amongst Christians and Jews. They were always amongst other people. There's a hadith that says that a Jewish man died and the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he stood up. And they asked him, he's Jewish, why did you stand? The prophet said, because isn't this a man with a soul? We have to learn to look at one another and see ourselves. Your joy must become my joy. Your pain must become my pain. Let's continue. So while we lived in this homeless shelter, my mother would take us to go feed other homeless people. It was really interesting. You know, a lot of people are trying to understand the condition of our community, particularly our young people trying to understand, but if you look at the what, you're going to always think that people are a bunch of animals, particularly black and brown. But if you look at the why, then the why will give you the answer. There's four E's that I believe make us who we are. The first E is environment. 
Let's take two dogs, a dog from the suburbs, and a dog from where I'm from, the hood. Now this dog from the suburbs, his name is Smoochie, okay? He's about this big. He got the new Jordans. If Smoochie go missing, it's a billboard. $20,000 if you find Smoochie. <laughs> Smoochie and the owner, they kiss each other in the mouth and all that type of stuff. For the dog that come from where I come from, his name is Butch, Killer, Rufus, Optimus Prime. We feed him hot sauce, gunpowder, hot Cheetos. You can walk on the other side of the street, you pose no threat to the property that Rufus is guarding, but he want to jump over that fence to get you. Even the animals are upset where some of us come from. The cats is mad, Imam, the, the, the squirrels don't even run no more, you gotta walk around them. So now imagine the impact of the environment on human beings. Where we live in a box and we wonder why we can't think outside of it. The next E, is exposure. Exposure. All of us have walked into somebody's house. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's probably your house. And when you walked in the house, it smelled like death when you walked in. My God. It was funky, brother. But everybody ain't playing Fortnite. They just relaxing, they chilling out. But they can't smell it. Why is it that you can smell it, but the people in the house can't smell it? You to it, big brother. But if you stay there long enough, what will happen? You're gonna get used to it too. So we see so many poles with teddy bears surrounded. I don't know how it is in Toledo, but in Cleveland, it's a big deal. Every time a young person shot and killed, wherever he died or she died, there is teddy bears left. <coughs> Y'all with me right now? Can you imagine the state of our society where this toy that was given to us to make us happy, now when it is given to you, it makes you sad? This is our condition. Next E is education. Education. Let, let, me, let me ask the question if I can. If you're a Muslim, raise your hand. If you are of the Christian faith, raise your hand. Okay, you gotta be proud of that now. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing embarrassing about that. Being Christ like. If you are still trying to find your way, don't raise your hand. You know, we'll 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 continue to be of assistance to one another. So my point to you and me is that education is not just in a form of math and science, but who are you? <coughs> Why were you created? Why are you here? What is the reason that the Creator brought us to this earth? Very important question. The last E is experience. Experience. I'm ready to close, and I want to to give you. Currently, I'm a currently I'm a master's student at Bayonne Claremont University, and my degree is in Islamic studies. Islamic studies. And the reason why I took this is because being involved in politics, you need a lot of prayer. A lot of spiritual defense. You know, grandma, my, my, my grandma, she she uh, she said, baby, I'm gonna pray for you. This is a part of our tradition. Even the African American experience. That's the thing that we like to say to one another. I'm gonna pray for you, brother. Why? Because prayer is a real thing. You can feel it. Not just if you bow down, you make a salat, but to take a moment to recognize that God is over your life, and this is a beautiful thing. So I want to share with you some things that I learned in my last my last class, and add some cultural and some historical reference points if I could, then we take some questions. Number one, being here in America, you and I, particularly in the inner city of America, especially if you're Muslims and Christians, for some strange reason, we have disconnected. I gotta be truthful with you. 
Many of us, alhamdulillah, I'm a, I'm a third My grandparents became Muslim. My mother and father Muslim. Muslim, my mom passed away nine years back from breast cancer. My best, best friend. But she was doing things with me, not even knowing that she was following the sunnah of Muhammad. So peace and blessings be upon her. She was taking us and doing things that she never heard the hadith before and didn't know this or that. She would just understand that in order for us to make a change in our community, we must stop seeing us as us and them as them. Our teachers say, you have to, you and I must live like we never heard of you and I. You and I must live like we never heard of you and I. So in America, we have a different culture in America and other people from other places and other parts of the world can't fully understand what we're dealing with in America. We got our own struggles. We have our own dynamics. So how can someone from all the way across the world tell you and me how we should treat one another? This is a big issue. How can we as Muslims or how can we as Christians look at our cousins and our aunties and our mothers and our brothers and separate from one another based upon the fact that they are Christian or they are nation of Islam or they are this or they are that? As you study Islam and the history of Islam, you and I know there was always, as soon as the Prophet saw Islam transition, man, the Muslims went to war with one another. They were fighting each other. They was this is a harsh history, but they was killing each other. Yeah. So those who come to you and me and make us hate one another based upon our faiths, that is not a part of the tradition of Muhammad. I'm speaking to the Muslims right now. Sorry, sorry. It is not a part of our tradition to disrespect our mothers. That is the womb that bore us. The nation is the womb that bore us. Our mothers, our Christian mothers. I was talking to my, my grandmother, the same one. And, uh, you know, I called myself being revolutionary. But she got me together. I walked in, and, you know, she has this white Jesus on her, on her, on her mantle. And uh, I said to her, Grandma, what you doing with this white Jesus? You know, the word, it says that he had, had hair of wool and skin of bronze. She said, don't you mess with my white Jesus. <laughs> Why? Why is that? Because the life that she experienced and went through, no matter what I believe, she found her faith and love in the church. And who are you and me to say that that medicine is the wrong medicine? I don't know if I'm talking to anybody yet. I don't know if you have these issues here in Toledo. I know we have the issues in Cleveland. That you should never disrespect your grandmother and your mother's faith. Never. And that the true faith and true religion is love. And that was the way of Muhammad. So I saw. That was the way. That is God. God doesn't necessarily love. He is love. And if you say you love God, but you hate God's creation, then you are lying to yourself. If you think that you must stay in the four walls of your church or the four walls of your masjid, in reality, you got to be in the streets. In Cleveland, we in the streets. Our dawah is not passing out pamphlets. Our dawah is passing out food, baby. You want to give dawah? You want to show people that Islam is well or Christianity is well? You got to be in the streets with the people. And as we are discussing and talking about this beautiful topic of the color of contribution, we recognize that if you want to follow the way of Jesus and Muhammad, how do you do that by being a coward? Out of here. <laughs> I brought my brother with me in case somebody from Toledo don't like what I say. <laughs> you know, Muslims become prepared. <laughs> don't you think we did? They always prepared. How can we uplift a community if you don't start with love? The prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Two people would ask him the same question and he would give them a different answer based upon their condition. How can we help the young people in our churches and in our masjids when as soon as they come in, 
You already got a prescription for them. You don't even know them. And just like these commercials we're seeing right now. Because if you were to close your ears, what you're seeing, don't, it don't even match what you're hearing. They got a dog, she dog walking, and she's running and smiling. And in the words it says, you know, if you use this medicine, your right hand gonna stop working, your left eye gonna start switching, and you might die. And then it says, ask your doctor, like, no, I don't need to ask my doctor nothing. If that is the side effects, I ain't taking this medicine. You see these commercials, and it, it's more and more. I don't even know what they're talking about. They don't even match what's on the commercial. So how can you and I uplift someone if you don't first understand their condition? You know what they're going through. But what do we do? How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. All right, good. I'm out of here. How you doing, brother? I'm doing I'm out of here. Uh, uh. We don't even take a moment to understand what our people are going through. Oh, but you know every hadith on what we're not supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know every Bible verse on what you ain't supposed to do. Sister, you know you can't do that. Sister, you know you shouldn't be you wearing your hair out. Sister, you should Our Muslim women are being abused across this country. And they have to go other places to be taken care of. And you talking about the strain of her hair. What nonsense is this? You don't understand the condition. The brother just got out of jail. You don't even understand his condition, and you make him over the daycare center. Oh, it makes sense. You know, pedophilia didn't just happen in the church. It's happening in mass churches across this country. Mm -hmm. I can tell you stories of young Muslims growing up who've experienced pedophilia in the mass churches. Why? Because brothers come in from the penitentiary, you don't even ask why they went to jail. Come on, brother, I forgive you. You're a fool. Mm -hmm. And now you're putting your children in harm's way. And then you grow up later just to find that your son, uh, your son Abdul Rahman, and was sexually molested as a baby. And the son, come on, man. We can't move if we don't move with truth. So what we have to understand that you must understand the condition of the people. You can't contribute nothing to nobody if you don't first come with mercy. Look at the Quran. Read the Quran. The Quran is a love letter to humanity. It's a lot of love letter to us. He starts out with everyone except for one chapter. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, the beneficent, the most merciful. He's constantly reminding you that he is a God of mercy. He constantly reminds you that. That no matter what you do, Allah is merciful. But how is it that you are constricting God and you make people feel like God ain't got no mercy for them? They leave you feeling worse off. The prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, one of his names was Bashir. What does Bashir mean? To bring up good news. So people left him feeling like hopeful. They left him feeling like, you know what? I'm going through my thing, man. You know what? I can make it. Allah is merciful. I can do it. But some people leave. Now, child, I'm not talking about child, okay? Your cousins and them. All your cousins. Some of your cousins, okay? <laughs> they leave some of your cousins feeling worse about the mercy of God. So number one, if we're going to contribute anything to the society, let's first start off with love. Brother, your, your, your past leg, brother. Well, listen, you want to mention that hadith? Mention the hadith that's smiling at charity. How about that? Why don't you start with that, brother? You don't even know my name, and you already telling me what I can't do. You don't know where I come from. You don't know my condition. You don't know my pain. The masjid and the church should be the hospitals for the sick. But instead, people are becoming sicker coming there than their own streets. Think about this. And you don't think you're going to be held responsible for every person that left the church and left the masjid because you made them feel unwelcome? You don't think God going to punish us for that? For sure. For sure. Just like the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said that when you inspire a person to do good, you receive the barakah from it. You receive the blessings from it. As if you did it. And if you push somebody to do bad, you're receiving the sins from it as if you did it. Are y'all with me right now? I'm going to let it close. You with me? What I'm saying is that Islam has the potential to be revolutionary. It has always been revolutionary. There is no statement more revolutionary than la ilaha illallah. There ain't no statement greater than that. So my Christian brothers and sisters, la ilaha illallah means there ain't no God but God. 
Ain't nothing more revolutionary than that statement. You know why? Because can't no, you can't put nothing in front of me. How do you defeat a people who came to die? They come to the battle, they kiss their wife and say, baby, I may not come back. How do you defeat them? When you came and you told your wife, I'll be back. How are you going to defeat me? How are you going to destroy me when your wife and you, you on the battlefield thinking about going home? When we came to find home on the battlefield. How do you defeat people like that? La ilaha illallah. There is no God but God. That's a revolutionary statement. We don't put man or woman before God. We don't put no money before God. We don't put, you can't sell us. We ain't selling our soul. It ain't for sale. Ali ibn, uh, Ali ibn Talib, he said, with the hand, he said, your soul was created for paradise. Don't sell it for a miserable price. So what I'm saying to you and to me, that the Quran is not just a literal book. You can find ayats means, ayats don't just mean verses, it means miracles. So you find the ayats of Allah outside too, don't you? When the breeze, that strong breeze out there, <laughs> those pushing us on the highway, boy, I ain't know what we doing. My brother don't know that I was kind of nervous. <laughs> now, we may not make it to mom. Be <laughs> He's driving. Peace to be locked. That guy's the greatest. <laughs> so you can find the mercy and the greatness of God when you look at the ants. When you look at your baby, and my brother, I was watching my brother hold his baby, and I said, man, this is, you, you, when you look in the mirror, you see the greatness of God. We are more excited about seeing man-made things than we are about seeing your own self every day. What creation of God is more beautiful than man and woman? <clears throat> I close it, I say, that as you look particularly at the movements in America, the Christians and the Muslims always work together. Always. They always work, always on the front line together. Black and white always work together. Just as much as black and white people brought us freedom, there were some black and white people that brought us uh, 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 enslavement. So we have to get it wrong. If you and I are going to make a change in this community and in this country, we must first tap into what it means to be a Muslim and a Christian. And we have to put humanity before religiosity. And it's not like, hey brother, what's your name? Where you come from? That stuff don't even matter. Where I come from, I come from God. That's where I come from. No, you're from Brooklyn. No, I'm from Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna alayhi wa rashiyun. From God we leave, to God we return. Where you from? I'm from God. Where you going? To God. That's where I'm going. That's where I came from. That's, that's where we come from. That's where we going. But the question is, what you going to do in between time? Because if you don't like Christians, then it's, you also don't like some Muslims too. So don't tell me it's just about Islamic Christianity. You don't like people that you think that don't listen and believe what you believe. That's what it is. If you don't like Christians, there's some Muslims that you don't like. Because you feel like you got the right idea. You got the right fix. You, as if there wasn't different perspectives of the Sharia. The different perspective of the Sharia. For those, for my brothers, Sharia, you know, they, they use Sharia as a, a, a thing to scare people, you know? And the text is, we don't want no Sharia law, you know? That's just their perspective. <laughs> Why is that, though? Because they see Muslims overseas. There ain't no Islamic governments. They see Muslims overseas doing some wild stuff. And if you say they don't, you don't, then, you, then, then your issue is lying, because you're lying. Look at the Muslim, look at the Muslim acting overseas, man. Look at what's going on in Saudi Arabia. If the if uh, we're going, I'm, I'm going to Umrah, inshallah, March 8th to the 18th. I would never go to Mecca if it wasn't for the Kaaba. Who would go? Because the racism that we have seen amongst Muslims, oh la ilaha Allah. Listen to Allah says in the Quran. Listen to the conversation between Satan and Allah. Says, Satan says, I'll be the last minute of Shaitan Rajim, this is the last minute of Shaitan Rajim. Kalaktani minar, kalaktahu mintin. The Satan says to God, I am better than him. I was created from fire. He was created from, from dirt, from mud. 
Satan was the first racist, wasn't he? <clears throat> so if you are a racist, you are standing on a satanic foundation. And you have mental health problems. <laughs> Don't forget that. Don't forget that. <laughs>